morning to everyone, excellencies, dear friends. I would like to start just quickly uh, thanking uh, our dear guests this morning for the opportunity to address you quickly on this issue. Uh, the main topic that I would like to talk on this regard is how to build a new momentum towards the 2030 deadline for the SDGs. At the beginning or at the outset, allow me to acknowledge the long-term impact of COVID-19 at social, economic, and political areas that poses important challenges for many countries around the world and contributed negatively to the deteriorations of several indicators in health, healthcare system, or healthcare programs, particularly in developing country. You may know, or you may be asking why this is connected to the SDG. Well, uh, let me tell you that this negative impact goes directly and affect negatively the SDG3, which is the good health and well-being. Therefore, the negative impact of this pandemic continue to pose an important challenges for many countries around the world. And therefore, you may find out one clue to understand the lack of commitment in that area. But more than that, there's no doubt about it that this negative impact of the COVID uh, has also uh, impact other disease, diseases such as the uh, malaria and including increased uh, epidemic risk and challenges for epidemic control. This is one important um, fact that we need to consider when we address this issue. But more than that, and nevertheless, new challenges are arising from unexpected factors uh, that have been consolidated in the last five years, in my view. Um, namely, a global trend of contraction of the globalization as a phenomenon and the emerging forces um, around regionalism. And this is creating a real impact uh, from a geopolitical strategy and point of view that needed to be considered as part of the new challenges in the implementation of the SDGs. And as well, you may be asking why the geopolitics has an impact on SDGs. It is clear that it's fully connected with the number one SDG 17, dealing with the global partnership that goes beyond only public-private partnership, but also in the interstate or intergovernmental relationship that, of course, has created new challenges and issues that need to be considered when we address the issue of the SDGs. The reality on the ground shows us that the international community is moving back for a strong regionalism under the leadership of three main pillars or three uh, main legs, namely the United States of America, Russia, and China. Therefore, or consequently, a significant number of setbacks can be explained by a change on the priorities at national or at the national interest in countries like in Africa, Latin America, and South, uh, Southeast Asian countries. This is a very important topic that I will invite you to consider since um, moving back from a global or a globalism phenomenon and going back to a regionalism implies not only a change in the mind of political leaders and country, but also affects national priorities. Therefore, and this is one of the observations that I like to leave for you to consider in this debate is that even though we are moving back to our regionalism, there will be a, an opportunity for SDG agenda to um, have or to be in track for the implementation or full implementation by 2030, but need to be fully aligned with national priorities. Otherwise, it's going to be a waste of our time from a global perspective speaking, of course. Um, Yesterday, uh, in the context of the general debate um, of the UNGA 78, the President of El Salvador, His Excellency Mr. Najib Bukele, presented the successful case of El Salvador. I invite you to Google the, the statement of uh, President Najib Bukele so you may have a full um, understanding of what I'm going to say right now about, which is precisely, um, I will say, the key to understand 
the main point that we are uh, addressing here, which is as strengthen institutions and political commitment for the timely achieve of the SDGs. And the story goes this way. El Salvador was at the top number one of the countries who was um, considered the most uh, dangerous for high level of criminality and um, also for, of course, um, assassinations, murders, extortions, and several other crimes. In the context of four years after a changing in the paradigm of understanding a very fundamental topic within the United Nations, with this, which is human rights, El Salvador currently has become the safest countries in the whole American continent. Now, how can you explain this chief coming from the dangerous country in, in the hemisphere to the safest one? And this, of course, is fully connected to the SDG as well. SDG 16, dealing with justice and peace, because is fully connected with our national interests and priorities. That's the reason why El Salvador covering this particular aspect of their national interest simultaneously is able to connect with the SDG 16 and at large with the um, SDGs as a whole. Now, having said that, um, what we are proposing for consideration as a new factor to be included in uh, the measures that can be taken by different other governments in order to create this momentum towards 2030 will be to create a harmonic combination of national interests together with the SDGs. If any country is not able to connect the SDG agenda with their own national interest, there um, will be a waste of time, waste of money, because not even political interest from the government, but also, and this is the most important, and that's the reason why I'm happy to tell you this audience, even with the civil society. It is supposed to the role played by civil society in any country is to contribute to improve uh, conditions or living condition of the particular society. But if we are following the SDGs as it was written in a stone, like 10 commands, we're going nowhere. It has to be fully connected with the national interest. And of course, every country has its own particularities. We cannot expect countries to just simply commit to the 17 goals if we are seen as a 10, commander, a ten commandment. It needs to be seen as a roadmap. And if we see the SDG as a roadmap, then we have a chance to expand and to um, flow with the national interest and therefore um, be in a better position for not only implementing, but also to fulfill in other areas of interest, such as financing for development, but also uh, on the political participation of national institutions, civil society, and private sector. Because at the very end, nobody is going to invest in any country that is still suffering from criminality in the case of El Salvador. But also, if your country is in a different position and a different level, nobody is going to do their best contribution if they feel they are just simply following an agenda uh, that has been created outside their own interests. And this is a key point that, in my view, needs to be considered. And finally, uh, of course, with this idea of aligning national objectives with the SDGs and the role of financing for development, it's give me back to the idea that I mentioned in terms of how geopolitical um, approach is creating an interface or creating an impact on the implementation of FDGs. Because all issue of financing uh, is connected to how a country is perceiving uh, this um, area of interest, which country uh, or which, in which uh, legs your country is located under the umbrella of the United States, under the umbrella of Russia, under the umbrella of China. 
Can we create a common agenda for all of us? Perhaps, but not in my view, in the way in which the SDGs were negotiated. It was a different political context. And we can see this, unfortunately, as a, in a similar case when the UN addressed many years ago how to change or revitalize the United Nations, in particular, Security Council. We know that it has been an impossible task. I always say as a joke that the only um, way in which the Security Council is going to be changed is when their world war is over. Now the problem will be who's going to be alive to uh, form a new United Nations organization. But then we need to see that as part of an important um, understanding of how international community works and how the UN can contribute to development uh, of a common agenda, but need to be, again, in full connection with the national interest. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.